Lulio Tori Reese here, and this is our view of the LEGO Ninjago Ultra Stealth Raider. So similar to how the final flight of the Destiny's Bounty is meant to be a recreation of the original Destiny's Bounty, the Ultra Stealth Raider is meant to be a recreation of the Ultra Sonic Raider from the first season of Ninjago. I really like what they're doing of grabbing old vehicles and updating them with modern building styles and stuff. It's a nice way to go back to the roots of Ninjago, and it's something that I really enjoy. So the Ultra Stealth Raider comes with the minifigures of Cole, Jay, Kai, Zane, Sensei Yang, Azurai, and Master Chen. And it also includes the Chetosaurus and the Ultra Stealth Raider itself, which can separate into four different vehicles. So, let's get on with this review. So, over here are the minifigures that come with the Ultra Stealth Raider. I'll go over the ninjas first and then go over the villains since I can't fit them all in one frame. But over here you can see the ninjas and from left to right you have Cole, Jay, Kai, and Zane. So let's start off with Cole over here since the Day of the Depart special focuses on him. And that's where the Ultra Stealth Reader appeared. So you can see Cole over here and something to mention about the Day of the Departed suits. They bring back classic elements from other Ninjago suits such as the ninja masks that were introduced in the tournament of elements, the classic symbols from the first series, the tendency to mix in the regular color with a different shade, the belts from the ZX suits right over there, the sword holder pieces from Skybound, and it's basically a combination of every Ninjago suit so far, and I really like it. But anyways, getting back to Cole over here, for his articulation, since all LEGO minifigures share the same articulation, let me just pop this off a second. Whoops. Ah, it's kind of hard to get the sword piece off. You have the arms, which if we remove the daggers that it comes with, they can go all around, the legs, they can kick or go back. And you can see that Cole has two faces. His happy face, and his more serious face. Which, it's a nice thing that we finally get more expressions from the ninjas, and I think it had to do with an article that was talking about like if LEGO was making kids like more violent because of the fact that the character faces were always serious, they really didn't have any happy expressions. But I'm glad that we are getting more facial expressions for the ninjas. And next we have Jay, my favorite ninja. And you can see him in all his detail. He has two swords, just like Kai. Which you can put back here. For his mask, you have a smirk over here. And you have a worry face. Which makes a lot of sense for the character of Jay being the comedic one. Next we have Kai over here. And you can see that it's almost the same deal as Jay. The blades back there and if you take off the mask you have the same face all the way from 2011 and unfortunately no back face which is a shame but considering the fact that the next review will be the dragon's forge i don't remember if kai had a separate face in that one but hopefully he has another face there and not just the serious one from 2011 with a bunch of unnecessary scars but over here we have zane and you can see just like with the other ninjas. And something I mentioned about the colors. Cole mixes in black and gray. Jay mixes in navy and blue. Kai mixes in crimson and red. And Zane mixes in white and silver. Which makes sense since he was the titanium ninja in Tournament of Elements. You can take off his mask. You have his robotic face over here. And you have his non-battle face. And now let's get on with the minifigures for the villains. So over here we have the three villains that come with this set. Sensei Yang, Aizurai, and Master Chen. So let's start with Sensei Yang over here since he is the main villain for the Day of the Departed special. And over here you can see Sensei Yang. He has green skin because obviously he's a ghost. He has the classic ghost tail that was introduced in Possession. He has a silver hat. He has no back face, he has a black beard, and if I'm correct, the chest piece over here is similar to that of Sensei Wu's. Well, you can see that it is a robe, but it's not the same one as Sensei Wu. 
And you can see that he has his arrow blade over here. I forgot what they called these weapons, but basically when the villains are returned from the dead, they would bring back a version of the collectible for that year. For example, Master Chen has the Jade Blade over there. Cryptor would have the Techno Blade, and over here, since Yang was in possession, even though he wasn't a villain there, he has the Arrow Blade. And over here, you can see that he has a lantern attached to him. And over here is Azurai, and he's just your typical Anachondrai. He's really just recycled from 2015. You can see that he has a machete over here. And you can see that obviously he doesn't have one eye because why would his name be Azurai if he had both eyes? So you can see that. Back detail, legs. You basically get the point. And over here we have Master Chen. And you can see that he has the headpiece for the anachondra you can see he has his face he has no other face you can see he has his anachondra symbol right over there even though it's kind of hard to see because of the gold you can see his chest piece over here and he's recycled from 2015 just like Azurai. you can see that he has the wolverine piece claws i don't know what they call this piece i but i know that it was used for wolverine's claws when they began the marvel superheroes line and you can see the jade blade So that's basically it for all the minifigures. So now let's get on with the actual set itself, starting with the Chenosaurus. So over here we have the Chenosaurus, and this is basically Chen's chair on top of a giant dinosaur. Yeah, there's really no explanation for this, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't look cool. Over here you can see that he has a brick built head, you can see that he has some articulation in the legs, he can spread them out. He could actually go 360 if it weren't for these blasters standing in the way. See the feet over here, they can fold in, turn all around. You have the tail over here which you can move at each part individually. So for example, you could, you could have it like this. Whoops, I accidentally fired one of the missiles, or like that. And speaking of the missiles, how these work is that Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second, guys. I'm trying to fix this. Alright. How the missiles work is that you go back here and you just tap them. Wait, I'm pretty sure you tap them to the left since these are vertical. There it is. Oh, this one didn't fire that well. Hold on a second. That's how you fire the missiles. And over here you can see these chainsaws, you can see some bows over here, some crossbows, and you have Master Chen's chair. And you can actually grab your Master Chen minifigure and plop them on top of here. And you could have them riding the Chenosaurus just like in the Day of the Departed special. Or if you absolutely don't like the Chenosaurus, just have them sitting in a chair and be like, Wait a cop! To the tournament of elements. But that's basically it for the Chenosaurus. So now let's get on with the actual Ultra Stealth Raider itself. So over here are the two tread bikes for the Ultra Stealth Raider. I'm going over both of them at once since they're practically the same thing. But let's take a look at the blue tread bike over here which belongs to Jay. Just to show off all the features. So you can obviously roll it around. It has treads over here, you have the handle, and if you grab your minifigure, you can actually have them ride it, or you can have them sitting down. So yeah, you just roll it around, and you can see that this moves as well, and you have the missile over here. Well, this is actually a storage for another missile. The actual missile is right over here, which, let me just, there it is. And the next one is the Red Tread Cycle, which belongs to Kai. Now, these aren't actually called Red and Blue tri Tread Cycles. I just made up those names. They're just Tread Cycles and that's it. That's what it says in the official description on LEGO.com. So, over here you can see Kai and his bike. 
and the same features as J. Roll it around, fire the missile, which in this case it's over here because we have some pegs over there. And you can see that the missile fires and it actually went out of the refuse station. So that's all for the Ultra Stealth Raider Tread Bikes. So now let's get on to the big bike. So over here is the big bike for the Ultra Stealth Raider. And I wish this had a more creative name, but hey, that's for shop.lego.com to decide. So over here you have the big bike, and unlike the tread bikes, this has no treads. Rather, it acts more like a car of sorts, a car-bike hybrid, sort of like the Tron cycles. So you can roll it around. You have these missiles over here, these stud shooters, which you could just do this. Which, yeah, I don't recommend these because of the fact that these studs get lost very easily. And I honestly don't like these type of shooters. I wish that LEGO would somehow do something where like maybe they could grab a 2x1 brick instead. Those actually fire very well on here. But the studs get lost very easily. And also for the combination later, you could fold up the cockpit part to the front. And you could take off the cockpit, get your Cole minifigure, even though it's Lloyd who drives this in the special, and you could just store the daggers right over there, and you could have them riding in. But that's basically everything for the big bike, so now let's get on with the Helijet. So over here is the Helijet. And you can see that it really doesn't do much. Unlike the other vehicles where they have shooters and whatnot, this over here has nothing practically. The only feature that the Helijet has is just the wings. And they don't even pop up that well, it's just this little piece over here. Like, let me see. Oh, and I accidentally grabbed this shell. Let me put it back in. Whoops. Hold on a second. Let me fix this first. Alright, so, if you press over here, you can see that only pops up a bit. But I do like that they actually have the fire decals over there, so that it looks like it's flying. And you have a prison over here, so that if you want to grab eyes or eye, let's say, just shove them in. Well, take off his weapon first, put him in, and that's it. And you could grab your Zane minifigure, even though it's Jay who drives the Helijet in the Day of the Part special, which makes a lot more sense considering the fact that he's more skilled with jets. But anyways, grab Zane and put him in over there. And you could just have him fly around like, wee. But yeah, the Helijet doesn't really do anything. But that's it for the individual vehicles of the Ultra Stealth Raider. So now let's put them together. So first you're going to grab the big bike over here. And you're going to flip this part to the front. Then grab the Helijet. Attach it like this so that these little pieces over here slide in. And wait a minute, this thing keeps popping off. Attach it there and grab the two tread bikes and attach them into these ports over here. And put them together. And over here we have the combined Ultra Stealth Breeder and this thing looks fantastic. It fixes up some of the problems of the old Stealth Breeder. For example, now you can have all four of the ninja rather than just two. And I also like how they're able to separate and come together, which is a lot better than the old Stealth Raider, where you could just separate it into a jet, and then if you leave the carrier with nothing practically. But over here, it looks fantastic. The vehicles look complete on their own, and put together, they just look amazing. And there's even this really cool video that I found on YouTube where somebody actually put pieces in in order to motorize the Sonic Raider, and it just looked great. But that's basically it for the Ultra Stealth Raider. Overall, the Ultra Stealth Raider is a fantastic set, and I would recommend it to any Ninjago fan. Considering I am a fan of the first season, and it is my favorite season of Ninjago, 
I obviously had to get this since it is a recreation of the Ultrasonic Raider. The minifigures are done very well and the Chenosaurus is very well built as well. But the Ultra Self Raider just steals the show. The fact that you have four separate vehicles and they combine into one just like the Zords and Power Rangers, it's just great and this set is overall fantastic. And if you're a huge Ninjago fan, you definitely need this set in your collection. But anyways, those are my thoughts on the Ultra Self Raider. What do you guys think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'm Julio Toy Reviews, and I'm signing off. Thanks for watching everyone.